Well, today I'm at the Fort Myers area of Florida. And I went around and I filmed these houses being built. And I'm going to show you what I filmed. And at the very end, I'm going to do a commentary on it. So here we go. So when I get a new lot like this, they pile it all up with the sand. And then they're going to flatten it all out. And we're looking at the road. And this is how they built this up. Now this is high off the road. Uh, I think they have a code how high it should be from the road so it don't get flooded. But also they're going to put a septic tank in here. So it has to be higher than the road. And they're starting to form it out here. They rough formed it. And in here, you can see where they have the pecs going underneath everything. Now in Pennsylvania, if this, uh, if we were doing footers like they're doing, we would have to go down 42 to 48 inches. And there would be, uh, and it'd have to sit on that. Sometimes it'd be a slab, but this is what they're doing. They're putting all the rough plumbing in. There they are putting the forms in. So now they got the plastic in. And it's all formed with the rebar and the rebar is tied in here like this and it's all ready to go we're walking up to another one where they already poured the pad and you can see these are the rebar for the block and they go in now everything's poured here's all the plumbing underneath which uh you know, I'm not a fan of plumbing underneath like that. It's good until it breaks. So that's the way it is before they start the block work. Now in this one you can see where they delivered the block work. And over here, this is the sand. You do this in Europe too. You see a lot of this in Europe. There's the cement they're using. High strength masonry cement. Type S. So they mix the sand and the cement. And then, looks like they got the lines all in already. And they got it all squared off and ready to go. Here's some column block. Then we got some shoe block. This is for the rebar to go through. And looks like the lentil that go over the garage. That's for the rebar to go through. And looks like they have the same thing here to go over the windows. You can see where it's just upside down and this is the front of it. That's the type of cement they're using. High strength masonry cement type S type M. Now they got the block all in. I guess they got to show the rebar coming all the way down. A little hole there and up there. And I would imagine that what they're going to do, here's those lentils. See those big lentils I was talking about? How they go across. And here's the smaller lentil here. And under here where the windowsill goes, looks like they got a windowsill type of thing. Now you can see how they put the wood here to block it up when they were pouring the concrete so that the concrete wouldn't bulge out. This is what it looks like when they take the plywood off. Now here's a house after they poured it. You can see all these what they call hurricane straps. And you can see where the hole was where that concrete pulled out. That's what it looks like on top where those hurricane straps are. Now here's a picture of that, uh, there's a septic tank there. And then you come back and see the hole they dug for that drain field. Now one of the reasons they build this so high off the road is not only because of the water, but they put a septic system in here. And you can see this is the drain field right here. And then here's the septic tank right here. Here's the road and this is going to be the driveway going up and you can see where they put these concrete 
tubes in here so the water will go through. And here's what those pipes look like for the driveway. So we're going to walk up inside one of the houses that uh, they're actually doing the inside in. And we're going to look how they frame everything. So over here it's metal. And we could go up and see how they put the boxes in inside the, the wall. Looks like they stick them in and then they just put the foam around them. And I guess they'll put some type of insulation here. So that's the inside. And then up on top, I don't know how they, okay, they got these straps. See these straps? Goes up into there. I think they're called hurricane straps, but I'm not sure. And you can see the plumbing comes from here. Then they go up and through the ceilings. And here it is. They put some fiberglass insulation in. You can see it on this side between the walls. Now it's all sheetrocked and you see they put the splash finish on it. Here's the edges they use for the stucco when they put on around the window frame. See it? Goes up like that on top and then it comes down. So that's what they use for the stucco edges. They stuccoed the outside of the building already. You've seen enough of my stucco videos. You can see the inside of the wall they stuccoed it. And here's where they have the sheetrock and you can see how it's all coming together. Let's go outside on the back porch. They stuck all the walls. You can see where they put the, the corner bar. Let's look up underneath here. Where that goes. It up. And then we wait a little while. And here they are getting ready to pour the concrete. So they could just pour it on sand here. Pennsylvania, that'd be a no no. You'd have to pour it on gravel. So I'm going to make some comments on this a little bit. Uh, the way that we build in Pennsylvania and the way they build in Florida is two different ways. Rarely do we ever build anything on a pad and if we did we'd never put it on sand because those sand it contained the water and it actually bounced that building up and down with the frost and we would never put a buried pipe like a water pipe down at the bottom. First of all if it's leaking you'll never know it. And if it freezes down there, how are you going to unfreeze it? So we don't do that because it's different weather. So in Pennsylvania, anytime we do a pad like that, it's always on gravel. Railroad tracks, they got hundreds and hundreds of tons of freight going over here every day. They build the railroad tracks on gravel. Why do they do that? Because it doesn't sink. All the water goes right through it if there's a flood. The frost in our area doesn't bounce it up and down, and we never have a problem with it. It's usually because of the frost. But here in Florida, they could use sand, and it's like a concrete sand, and that works for them. Up in our area, that wouldn't work, but we would use gravel. Now, as far as using rebar, I did a whole video called, Should I Use Rebar, Yes or No? And rebar, after so many years, starts to rot. Now I've had sailboats before and back in the old days I remember they actually made sailboats out of concrete and they used rebar. But insurance company will never insure a concrete uh, rebar or a sailboat. Hurricane straps. Uh, I looked at the way they put the hurricane straps. We use anchor bolts but 
In about 20 years, I'd check those because they'd rot out too. Insulation, it was, I was expecting them to put styrofoam on, but they put fiberglass. Now why they do that, I don't know. I had a good talk, I bumped into the inspector, a real nice guy. He was from Michigan, and he said when he first came out here, he couldn't believe the way they built. He didn't think it was any good, but then he became a believer as he went. He was actually building a house, and in his later years now, he's an inspector. And I could actually see why they need an inspector down here, because everything is built exactly the same, step by step by step. And he could inspect it as it goes. Everybody gets the same treatment, the same house. In Pennsylvania, that'll never work. So I'm in the Fort Myers area of Florida. Back in the 50s, I'd say 56 or 57, I actually lived down in this area. My dad worked over in uh, Cape Canaveral, which is Cape Kennedy, the Space Center today. And then we moved up around Tampa or the Sarasota area. So I still have friends and relatives down here and I wanted to do a video to show you the differences of what goes on. And so to sum it up, I always say what works in Pennsylvania doesn't work in Florida. What works in Florida doesn't work in Alaska. And what works in Alaska doesn't work in Southern California. It's all different. Sometimes people say, well, you shouldn't do it that way. Well, you don't live here. So when you, I come down here and I'd have to work, I'd have to kind of go with their techniques, whatever works. So thanks for watching. I'm Mike Haddock. I'll see you next video.